Um, good practice. Good uh, starting the third week of uh, really in preparation for this game. Love how the energy of the kids and, and what they've put together. Um, getting ready to load up, uh, pack up, and head down to San Diego and uh, look forward to some great hospitality from all the Redcoats in the Holiday Bowl down there. Our kids are really excited to go down there, have the opportunity, and enjoy San Diego, uh, as well as compete against a great team like Iowa. Um, as far as just a, a couple injury uh, injury reports, um, Drew Richmond right now has a foot sprain. He uh, was held from practice uh, today. Uh, Chase Williams uh, was uh, held from practice just from got a little bit of the flu going around uh, and. Uh, then um, uh, lastly, uh, Marquis Steph is getting better. He's still day to day. We'll see how it goes this week. Um, if there's any others you want to ask about, feel free. But everybody else is uh, practicing pretty well. So we look forward to getting down to San Diego and seeing y'all out practice tomorrow. Sounds like we'll have a little bit better weather. So with that, I'll take any questions. How has Marquis looked in practice? Um, he, he's running better. Uh, it, you know, at that position, it's a confidence thing. Um, and he's building confidence every day. Will it be right by Saturday? Uh, I don't know. It's not right today. Uh, and so we'll go through the week uh, and see where it's at. Uh, but it's day to day right now. What, what's the balance there of the upside of getting him in that game versus mm -hmm. not pushing him? Uh, if he's not confident in it, remember, I mean, I do three mm -hmm. things. Uh, you know, one, is he medically cleared? He's medically cleared to practice right now, which he's getting some practice. Um, is he confident? Uh, and then what's my gut say right now? You know, his confidence level is not high, and yeah. my gut doesn't feel very good. So that's where we are right now. And EA? Yeah, he's fully back. You know, he had a great week of practice last week. Uh, looked really good. I mean, it was a full pad uh, physical practice today. He looked really good. So I'm anticipating him being ready for this game. What so. happened with Drew Richmond, and what is his outlook for Friday? Yeah, you know, um, our last full pad practice just uh, got caught in the turf a little bit. It suffered a foot sprain. We held him. Uh, he's had three days of rest on it. He's out of the boot today, which is good, um, and moved around a little bit, but still tender. Uh, we'll just take it day to day and see how that goes. Keaton has talked over the course of the season how his confidence has grown from when he first got here. Mm -hmm. Just looking at where he's at now compared to when he first arrived in yeah. the spring, where have you seen that confidence? Yeah, you, you know, I, I really feel, as I said earlier, as our quarterback position grows, so was our team. And you look at, you know, one in five out of the last six games, it's a lot to do with Keaton and, and his play. You know, I, I think primarily the, the biggest thing that's happened is probably his decision making and protecting the football you know, over that span. You, you know, I thought he had. Five of those six games really did a really nice job of, you look at his touchdown to interception ratio over that span, he's, he's protecting the ball a, a lot better and making great decisions. Um, he's also getting the ball out. You know, that's that's one of the things that just talking with uh, Coach Ferenc down the little time that we had down uh, uh, down in the Holiday Bowl the other night at the director's dinner, uh, he, he made the comment of, man, he gets the ball out extremely quickly for a young mm -hmm. person. And uh, that's what you want for a quarterback. You know, great decision making and great timing uh, mm -hmm. to be able to get in the playmaker's hands. So that's where he's growing the most. If Drew can't go, what's the plan for the right side of the line? <clears throat> um, probably move Jalen out. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we were we moved Jalen out to right tackle, and Liam Jimmins is now healthy he is, uh, okay. again. So he's practicing at the right guard position mm -hmm. uh, right now. So and, and he's been really effective for us over the year. And Jalen's played that right tackle position. So we'll see how it goes through the week. But that's how we practice today. Looking at Iowa, where does this defense rank in terms of the ones you've faced this season? You know, they're only giving up 13.2 points a game. That jumps off the paper at you. Um, and, and you know, you, you look at you look at what they do. They, they, the offense is set up for their defense. You know, they're, defensively, they're only giving up 64 plays a game. So you have to make the most of each opportunity. And points are critical. You, you know, the the highest point total against them is 24 points. Um, so they're limiting possessions uh, by getting off the field on third down. Uh, they're limiting opportunities because of the way they play offense as a huddle team and, and really a, a pro style, take every every second off the play clock, slow the game down. Um, it's one of those games that you look up and it's it's a 10 to three game versus Michigan. It's 19 to 17, it's 24 to 22. It's, it's one of those games that every play and every possession matter uh, and every point matters. You know, and, and you look at it, I was even talking to Chase uh, McGrath about how important uh, our, our score team, our field goal team is going to be in this game, uh, that we've got we've to be perfect on each and every play, uh, and that's special teams too.
How important is it to get off get off to a lead uh, huge, against a team man. like this? Yeah, I mean you've seen the you've seen the stats. I think it's eighty four points to twenty seven uh, for their opponents. They're a start fast, finish strong team, and so uh, I think they have got eighty four points to twenty seven points uh, opponent wise. And then you look, it's very similar in the fourth quarter. They wear people down. Um, it, it reminds me of the old Stanford teams. Uh, to be honest with you, you try to you try to hopefully get up a, a couple scores and put put a team in an uncomfortable position, because when they have the lead and they have that tempo that they like, uh, it's a little bit it's it's right right in their wheelhouse. Are you guys enough different from anybody they've played to maybe be a matchup issue for them um, in it, their defense? You know, I think probably the closest team that they've played, I think we're different than every team they've played against, but maybe the closest teams they've played against has been Minnesota. Uh, with their receiving core, I think they have a talented receiving core uh, there and, and can pitch and catch. Um, uh, as well as uh, Nebraska spreads out a little bit and, and uses tempo, a little bit different style, but you can see you can see some formations um, that you can at least game plan against. Uh, but you know this is a, a different style of ball uh, than uh, than Iowa uh, than Iowa has faced. Uh, you know, so we'll have to adapt too. I mean, they may have a, a little bit of a change of a game plan, just like everybody else does against us. How much time did you and Kirk spend together, and what was your conversations like? Um, it was good. We, you know, we just were down at the director's dinner and got to spend, you know, 10, 15 minutes together, you know, before the dinner. And, uh, you know, you talk about one of the legends, uh, one of the legends of the game. And, you know, between him and, and, and Coach Fry, Hayden Fry, uh, God rest his soul, I mean, you're talking about the last, I think it's since 1982, uh, you know, that, that has been going on. But it's just... It's it's two special coaches, and you know, growing up, that's who you modeled yourself after. You know, you wanted to be Coach Fry. You wanted to be you wanted to be Kirk. You know, that's just first class. Uh, you know, uh, his teams have always been well well coached, physical, and disciplined. And uh, he's uh, he's one of the models uh, that all our co all coaches aspire to be. Did you try to pick his brain at all while you're down there? Or just to himself? <laughs> no, it, it's, it's very cordial. But, sure. you know, anytime you've got a man that's been at a place 21 years as a head coach, mm -hmm. you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you listen and take every little thing in you can. Mm -hmm. What to you is the importance of this game? What would a win <clears throat> mean for your program? Yeah, you, you know, I, I talked about that yesterday with our team. You know, we, we came back in yesterday and got – Got a really good lift and kind of set, you know, the tempo of this game. You know, I think it's important because when you look at our schedule, even for next year, we're going to play teams like this. I mean, this is a top 25 team, um, ranked 16th in the country. And you look at our schedule next year, there could we could play six of these games next year. We could play six top 25 opponents. So the mindset that we take into this game, I think, is imperative. You know, and and our kids are hungry. You know, these are two teams that are really finishing strong. You look at Iowa in the second half of the season, you look at us in the second half of the season, this puts an exclamation point on a, uh, on the season um, and it really jump starts the next year uh, going into spring. So, you know, I love the seriousness our kids have taken uh, over the over the, this being our third week. Um, it, they really uh, seem to be on a mission. Uh, they bring great focus and great energy and what a cool game to be in. You know, this is one of those top 25 matchups that's few and far between in this bowl season. So, it's what you want. A big a Pac-12 and a big Ten opponent, uh, two top twenty-five teams. That's special. Mm -hmm. How did you balance practices between game prep and getting young guys work? And what was your approach to the whole thing? Yeah, you know, we, we did a lot of competitive uh, drills against each other, just good on good, um, ones versus ones, twos versus twos, rather than service teams uh, in, in these weeks. And uh, and the kids liked it; uh, they really enjoyed enjoyed those opportunities. Um, and so uh, it, it gave some of our younger players. You know, I watched Brew McCoy uh, have the chance to get out there and get some great work. Some young guys like Kyle Ford get involved. Uh, Gino Corona, as I, I thought really took a, a jump start. Liam, Jim, uh, Liam Jimmins coming back and getting quality work. You know, it, it's really important for our guys to be able to have those extra three weeks. It's like having another spring ball, you know, so um, it was really important. Dan, I'll let you finish up. I was just, how do you, uh, you talked about it a little bit just then, yeah. match their physicality. I mean, that's the thing yeah. they're noted for. Yeah. How do you guys 
handle that. Yeah, you, you know, I think the most important thing, Dan, is, is one, you, you have to recognize what personnel groupings in there. They're going to use four different ones. You're going to see 11, 12, 21, and 22. And the substitution of matching their personnel, I think, is going to be critical in this game. Um, and then the communication, you're going to see a lot of shifts and motions uh, in this game. And, and guys controlling their gaps and winning their one on one matchups in those gaps are going to be imperative. And then I think, you know, this is a physical running football team, you know, both as a, both as a running back and then you look at the quarterback. I mean, he's, he's a big, strong kid that's hard to get down. Um, and it's going to be imperative that, you know, one, we gain tackle the back, but also when we get to third downs, hopefully our first down efficiency is important. We've talked about how good we have to be on first down, hopefully to create some third and long situations. They, they remind me so much of the old Stanford. I mean, third and one to three, you're in trouble. Um, you've got to try to get them in third and seven plus. And in that situation, having the ability to get the court, get pressure on the quarterback, whether it's four, five, six man rushing, get him down is going to be key. Thank you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.